The Shawshank Redemption, directed by Frank Darabont and based on a novella by Stephen King, is an excellent film for quarantine. It's a movie which reflects upon both the strengths and very nature of the human resilience and spirit. Our main man, Andy Dufresne, is a testament to the strength and patience that humans can possess. He was accused of murdering his wife and her lover. I hereby order you to serve two life sentences back to back. And was sent to Shawshank Prison, where Andy is confronted with violence and brutality from the outset. And faces it with humility from the beginning. He is part of the reason why the movie is so compelling. The challenges he overcomes are those which he does in his own way. One that is uniquely his. The movie establishes almost immediately that he's a morally clean character. Meaning that from the outset, it's established that Andy is truly, wholly an innocent man. This fact makes it easier for the audience to fall for Andy as a character. It allows him to be the emotional core of the film without posing any difficult moral barriers for the audience to love him as a character. The reason that Andy is such a compelling character is that his troubles in the prison are built specifically for him to deal with and solved in ways only he could determine. It makes him the emotional core of the film. He is both a symbol of perseverance and hope and an agent of it, too. We sat and drank with the sun on our shoulders and felt like free men. He beats the sisters in their power game by using something only he would know. You do that, and I'll put all eight inches of the steel in your ear. All right. But you should know that sudden serious brain injury causes the victim to bite down hard. In fact, I hear the bite reflex is so strong, they have to pry the victim's jaws open with a crowbar. Where do you get this shit? I read it. You know how to read. You ignorant fuck. And in turn, subverts the power dynamics in his favor, despite still being beaten within an inch of his life. In a weird way, he bested the sisters. Their goal was to break him, to break his spirit with abuse and assault. But Andy broke that cycle that the sisters had caught him in by refusing to concede. And even when it seems that they've gotten him pinned, he uses his unique knowledge and cunning to subvert the power that the sisters have over him. If this were anyone else, they might have done it entirely differently. Either accepted what was going to happen, fight some more, maybe throw scathing remarks, but from what the audience sees of Andy's cunning throughout the movie, they know that this is something only he was able to win, because he's, well... He's him. What makes all these scenes compelling from a film standpoint rather than character is the many facets at which the film chooses to use color grading and lighting in order to manipulate the mood, as well as the daring and unique camera movements in scenes where it calls for it. It all helps to convey a deep and instant sense of fear in some scenes, or a creeping sense of dread in others, or even a sense of freedom and spirited lightheartedness. The scene which shows Andy's escape route is quite effective in eliciting excitement from the audience, and it helps to contrast from the dread of the last few shots we saw of Andy holding a rope, which had heavy implications for his fate. But when we see that Andy never gave up after all, like it had been, been implied he did, it's quite a heavy relief, and this relief and excitement is made all the more effective by a panning shot, which frames the warden's face in an expression of surprise and shocked anger. This hyper-focused shot, framing Andy's abuser looking down the tunnels in an expression of paralyzed anger, knowing he'd been beaten, had made for an immensely satisfying scene and emphasized Andy's success with a quiet and subtle cunning, just like Andy. Step aside, Mert. This fucker's having himself an accident. You don't push him off the roof. In the scene where Andy is hanging off the side of a roof, the camera makes a daring upward panning motion that turns into an aerial God's eye view shot, where Andy is floundering on the edge between a painful death and safety of the roof. For anybody afraid of heights, or maybe death in general, 
This camera motion definitely achieves its purpose. It's fast and disorienting, and it serves to further heighten the emotion and tension of the scene between what Andy is trying to convey by scraping with the guard's temper. And the scene which closely follows is quite powerful in its spirited nature. The sepia-toned color grading, contrasting with the rest of the dull browns, grays, and neutral tones of the prison, helps to show the audience a shift in the mood for the inmates. The warm tones of the sun help to elicit a calm next to the deep tenor of Morgan Freeman's excellent voice and helps to bring the scene to a reflective nature that takes on almost a dreamlike quality. It both draws a specific mood and conveys a sense of hope. The lighting is used in other scenes for a harsh emphasis. In the scene where the sisters rough him up for the final time, the room in which he's dragged into has one focal point of light, and it's covering all the inmates who occupy the room in sharp angles, with little fill lighting to ease the edges of their faces, giving the scene an instant harsh and aggressive quality that matches the violence of the sisters and their intentions. It gives the scene an instant emotional recognizability that helps to warn the viewer, but also make them dread and fear what will come next. All these factors, in both writing and technique, help to make the movie a solid reflection upon the nature of human determination and hope, and further make it an excellent movie for these hard times. While you can't tunnel out of your house with a tiny pickaxe like Andy, you can still find ways to see hope and hold on to it, just like Andy did. All it takes is a little ingenuity and a little kindness, too.